So welcome back to my channel. Um, as you can see, my server build uh, is coming along. So last episode we looked at a parts list and what were the reasons for each of those parts. Uh, now I'm going to talk a little bit about the progress I've made. Um, on the left you can see the HDplex, this is the 500 watt version. Uh, a couple of cables on top that I'm not using. And you can see that this is now um, very roughly powering the motherboard which is fitted to the HDplex H5 version 3 case. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about this just uh, in case anybody wants to follow this build um, to avoid any of the issues that I've had. Now there isn't a great deal of stuff plugged into this. Um, from a normal computer you'd want to be running extra USB cables, um, all those kind of things. For me it's just basically a, a power button and I've got the back panel which has got the connectors on it which um, pretty much does whatever I need. Now you can see here with this large copper block this is now in place um, and I thought I'd explain quickly about how to fit one of those in case you want to have a go yourself. And I'm just going to get a little bit closer to this so you can see some of the detail here and I'll talk you through what this is. Uh, let's move these out of the way. So what happens with this is you've got the processor which is obviously right in the middle of this. Underneath um, I've got a uh, I think it's called 1700, um, it's the actual type of socket here. Um, there's a back plate that basically comes up from underneath the motherboard um, to which you attach or screw in um, these. I don't know if you can see these particularly well but they are there's some screws that you tighten by hand. Um, this block itself, uh, there's a couple of things to be aware of when you fit this um, and this is the most important. So you can see the height here um, and how these pipes are angled, um, some of them going downwards, some of them going upwards and they are going into these slots on the side of the case. Let me just move this out of the way. So you can see there's like four slots here. Now what this means when you put these pipes in is that this has to be at the right level. Um, now this is really important. So when you are mounting the motherboard um, there are lots of these little gold um, mounting screws. I'm not sure if you can see this well. My camera is going to behave itself. Um, these are basically the smallest ones in the pack. And If I just show you the pack so you've got a bit of reference for that. Okay, so as I was saying, so here's, here's your um, uh, little packet of mounting um, screws and this, this comes inside the HDplex case. Uh, what you want inside of this lot, this is slightly blurry, if I come back here, um, is the smallest ones, i.e. the ones that, are the, that have got the least height on them. Now, if you were to get that wrong, and there are slightly taller ones in here, um, what you would find is that this no longer lines up. So this is a big, big deal. Now, what you do with those little, um, those little screws is you basically just screw them into the, the spots on the on the base which are marked. Um, but what you can do is basically put your motherboard down and then just line them up so your motherboard's got screws on each corner and then it'll have some others on the sides and you can make sure that if you've screwed them in that they're actually in the right place. So it's pretty straightforward um, but as I say making sure that you've got the, the right height is really important. Now um, on this motherboard this is really important. I'm going to explain some of the issues I had with this. Um, firstly when you put these together um, make sure that the RAM is in these two slots I think this will work with one stick of RAM although I didn't like it very much I think I was in a lot of trouble getting this to boot um, another very obvious thing which is easy to get wrong is make sure you push these cables in properly so that they are they are really in um, both this one and this one um, and you can see down here get really close to this um, that I've got some of the some of the block, the power block, this two by two port here next to the eight block is not being used. Um, that doesn't seem to cause me a problem at the moment. I think it's a kind of either or. Um, and if I take that a step further into the into the power, you can see here uh, on the HD plex. Again, only relevant if you're building one of these. Um, this one's quite straightforward because it just goes in its slot. The, the red cable here, which is this one, does not fit. 
Um, so you want the black 8 connector um, which will then go into the motherboard and then you're done. So these two together will provide the power for the motherboard. If you get this wrong um, or you make a mistake and you use the one at the end which is hard disk, nothing's going to happen and frankly I wouldn't want to do that. Now the other gotcha on this case um, is actually this power button here um, which is in the side. Um, you need to make sure you put these in the correct slots but not just that, there is a plus and minus on them and you need them the right way around. You can see these are actually ended up twisted. Now if you don't get this right this button won't work. Um, it's not the end of the world because there's a button on the motherboard to boot it just in this top, uh, top left corner. Um, but obviously if you put this whole thing together and then discover this is wrong then you're going to get yourself in a bit of a mess. Uh, okay, so the other thing you can't see here um, is actually under this panel and that's the hard disk. So that arrived yesterday and that is an Intel Optane drive. Um, the earlier Optane drives, I think the top of the range one is a 900p, um, there are a ver variety of them. Um, the earlier Optane drives, the ones they made first time, are much lower latency than the newer ones. So if you are going to get these, look for the old version. I actually had to get these directly from China via eBay. Um, they're not available in UK shops, but these will be uh, the fastest. Uh, whether or not it makes a difference, I don't know, but uh, so again, like I said on my first video, this is down to the spec. Um, this panel here also comes off, and I think it can fit another, I think it's three hard disks. So if you really want to go crazy, you could actually fit four hard disks in this system. Um, right, so trouble I had with this. Um, if you need to update the BIOS, um, obviously first time you can't necessarily boot the computer to get in the BIOS to update it so you're kind of stuck. Um, this motherboard has a feature and there's a button over here um, that helps drive that, it's this little white button here, um, where you put the motherboard's BIOS into a USB stick. Um, the USB stick must be FAT32 so if you're not clear what that is it's um, it's basically the way that you format drives within Windows and um, that needs to go into a specific port, USB port on the back here, um, which is this one down here which is BIOS. Now there are instructions online, I suggest you follow them, but as I say, if this, if this won't post or it won't boot, um, then my suggestion is to, to follow that procedure and get the BIOS up to the right version. There are newer versions of RAM coming out. My understanding is that the support, supportability of some of these RAM chips is not great when you're on an old BIOS version. So that might be why you, you can't um, boot it. So a few, few more points about this motherboard and it's got some useful um, diagnostics on it. There are four LEDs down here. Um, each of these representing things like the processor or the RAM. Uh, I think it's got the hard disk as well on there. Now what these do is that if, if there is a problem, uh, one of these will stay on. So it, the, the red lights will flick back and forward if they're okay, it's just running a test. Um, but if one of these just stays on red, then you've obviously got a problem, which is very helpful for diagnostics. Um, like most motherboards, uh, and I don't know if it's very easy to see here, um, you've got a little LED sort of readout. This will give you letters and numbers, it will give you two of them. And um, you'll see it, let's say, sticking on A2 or whatever error code if it's not booting. And within the um, manual you can go and find out what that means. You can also look these up online. There's a lot of people that have got stuck um, and you'll find that there's some useful information on forums sometimes to help you through. Now don't get afraid when this is booting up because this will cycle through lots of numbers. Like I say this diagnostic will cycle through a lot of red lights. Um, this isn't anything to worry about. This is just part of the boot sequence so um, don't don't panic if you see that. Um, so in terms of like display port which is the connector on the back, um, no issues with that. This display port here straight into the monitor I've got um, no problems at all. So once I've got this booting up, um, I'm now into a position where I'm getting close uh, to be able to hook this up to the network and do some proper fancy stuff. Um, and I will be looking at uh, a software called Euphony, uh, which is a Linux-based operating system specifically designed for audio. So that's what I'm going to look at running here. 
Uh, you can also see from the last walkthrough that I was talking about having the JCAT cards and they would go in these two. Now I'm not going to do that for version 1. I'm literally just going to get the USB ports that are on here and the network port that's on here and see if I can get these working first just because I'm going to keep the complexity down by uh, a very very minimal spec to start with. So I thought I'd round off with it just a little bit of a conversation about the heat pipes and how you fit this whole block. Um, this isn't quite as obvious as you would think. Now the first thing you need to be careful of is that you've got quite a bit of thermal paste. Um, now I have kept running out so I've got thermal paste between the main block at the bottom and the CPU. Um, I've used very high quality thermal paste for that. And then you've got thermal paste that goes onto these, um, onto these heat pipes at the bottom and on the top of this. Um, then you will also have thermal paste which goes here, both sides, like on the left, to the to the heatsink side, and slightly to this. Um, you can't see this too well, but these metal square panels here. Um, so you need a lot of thermal paste. I think I got through about uh, I think it's about three um, injectors of thermal paste, which is an awful lot. Now you don't want to put it on too thick. This is really important. Uh, if you put thermal paste on too thick, it actually doesn't work. So make sure that when you are putting thermal paste on this, you're not splodging it on in huge amounts. It's very important around the chip as well. So what makes this tricky to fit? Um, when you sort of try and push these copper bars into here, you'll find that they stick up and, and don't fit onto this block at all. So you don't want to be pushing these in and then somehow ramming them down, you'll start damaging things. So be, just be careful with that. Um, what you want to think about is lining these up, getting these roughly right, and you'll have these these square plates. Now these are not an exact square, um, so you need to make sure these are the right way around. And I think they need to be slightly taller because um, it's not a square; it's actually a rectangle. It's hard to see. The bolts go in here. There's four of them, and then you bolt this in to tighten these up against this side panel. Now, again, if you were to tighten this up to its full without putting the top on, you'll find all your copper pipes sitting in the air and then you won't be able to push them down you'll start doing some damage. So what you want to do is get these get these on and get this on, this on top, which is done with these screws here. Um, but you don't want to be putting this all the way down or these all the way tight. You want to be doing a little bit of tightness here, a little bit of tightness here, a little bit of tightness here, a little bit of tightness here. Um, just gradually working your way down so that these fit. Now they aren't a perfect fit. I guess if I had to complain about the case manufacturer, you know, you, you are basically pushing these screws and this plate to hold this in place, which will work, um, but it isn't It isn't a really nice fit, so maybe the manufacturers can have a think about that. I, I don't know if it will affect thermal performance, but it just makes the build a bit more tricky.